While the queen and her brother-in-law were eloping, they jumped into a lake to escape the soldiers who were chasing them. After swimming out of the lake, they took off their wake clothes and hid in a country inn. But before their clothes come dry, the soldiers break in and arrest Sebastian. Queen Mary, who is hiding under the bed, reveals herself in order to save him and follows them back to the palace. Francis rushes to meet his fiancée when he learns she's returned. He couldn't understand how his beloved could be so cruel as to abandon him. Back this morning, they'd woken up embracing and vowed to be together forever. He believes that Mary must have left him because of something rather than running away with his brother. Tell me what happened. My friend died. My heart broke. Give me an honest answer. I deserve that. It's hard enough for Mary just to deal with Frances' forceful questions. But what's driving her crazy is that everyone is trying to force her to make a choice. King Henry is even more aggressive in asking her to marry the future king of France because his ambition is to rule Europe. So Queen Mary's succession to the throne of England is the first step towards his annexation of England and Scotland. Mary's marriage to the crown prince of France must be consummated as promised, or King Henry will execute his bastard son Sebastian. Queen Catherine also comes to accuse her if she left Francis before so that the prophecy of his death would not play out. Why does she return now? She even asks Mary to sacrifice her honor by lying to the others that she and Sebastian are secretly married. Mary's Scottish mother also writes a letter demanding that she marry the future king of France. Forced by many different forces, Queen Mary had no choice but to tell Francis the whole truth about what had happened. I want you to understand why I left you. It wasn't for lack of love or joy Nostradamus had a vision of your death brought about by me if we wed. Francis was so shocked by all this superstition that he couldn't believe that a prophecy had somehow denied his love. It was all nonsense. It pained him to urge Mary not to allow superstition or fear to dominate her reasoning in her life. She needed to take her destiny into her own hands as the ruler of the country. But Mary didn't want him to risk his life or die as he was predicted to. So she made a shocking decision she would save both of the French king's sons. She approached King Henry and promised that she would take the throne of England and marry his son, but that she would need to marry someone else. But not Francis. Bash. Legitimize him and make him the next king of France. King Henry weighed the pros and cons, but in the end his ambition prevailed and he agreed to Mary's terms. He then immediately set off for the Italian Pope to request that his illegitimate son be changed to first in line to the French throne. This also means that Queen Catherine of France is about to be deposed. She's worked hard at the court for decades, and she won't allow her power to crumble because of this. When Francis found out about Mary's offer, he went to his brother Sebastian to vent his anger. He couldn't accept the betrayal of his loved ones, and he couldn't accept Mary being taken away from Sebastian. The only thing we've done is try to save you. I'm the one who proposed marrying him. I propose that he be the new heir to the throne. You are throwing away everything we had for superstition. Perhaps it's because he's so sad that he's lost his throne and his woman that Francis decides to leave the country. But before he left, he did a lot to help her clear the obstacles in her way. No matter how long it took, no matter what the cost, he stayed steadfastly by Mary's side. Soon after, Catherine was imprisoned in the Tower of London, awaiting the return of King Henry before she could be executed. Sebastian attends the daily council meetings as heir to the throne. Since Queen Catherine had many spies, Sebastian's job as regent was not an easy one. Every day, he is confronted by commoners seeking redress of their grievances. This time, the woman brought him by the soldiers was his cousin, whom he had been quietly caring for. But because her father was a traitor, he couldn't reveal his kinship with her, so he begged Mary to help him deal with the matter. The two of them split up and managed to move his cousin out of the palace, avoiding Queen Catherine's eyes. But the strenuous exercise on the run triggered his cousin's premature labor. They had to find a place to stay to help his cousin give birth. With a dark forest full of strange creatures in front of them, and a large number of pursuers behind them. Sebastian decides to take the risk of going into the forest and wait for his cousin to give birth. As night falls, the risks escalate again. Mary ventures out to find water and comes back to find the pagan's necklace, which means they are marked and someone will die this night. But Sebastian panics and covers Mary's mouth when he learns she smashed the mark. The three people in the tent also started chanting a spell together before the pagan butchers could be tricked into leaving. His cousin's tolerance was at an all-time high. After a scream that pierced the clouds, she gave birth to a daughter. But his cousin died in a tent in the forest, slowly closing her eyes from hemorrhaging during childbirth. Mary faced death once more. She knew it was freedom again that had drawn these innocent people into a treacherous conspiracy. So she buried his poor cousin in a beautiful countryside and went to the pagan funeral rite of cutting her palm with a knife and offering her blood. Only gradually the sadness became somewhat ambiguous. The wise and compassionate Queen Mary has a fatal attraction for Sebastian. He accepts his own disturbed fate and learns to help her take some responsibility.
If I'm married to you, you'll be my family. I'll be in it for you, and only you. Impressed by the sincerity of his feelings, Mary kisses Sebastian, forgetting for a moment the promise she made to Francis. While the two of them were making out, Catherine's family from Medici, Italy, arrived in France. Ancient aristocrats were obsessed with walking to their deaths on the guillotine with grace and dignity. Queen Catherine, accused of adultery by her husband, was already dressing for her death. She puts on a corset to define her waist. Then she meticulously ties her shoes with ribbons. And finally, she puts on a magnificent diamond necklace. Queen Catherine's hands were folded and tied with thick twine. Finally, her head was placed on a block to await the fall of the guillotine. But at such a serious and tense moment, a menu was suddenly handed to her. Catherine read the menu and was furious. How could there be no prawns, no flowers or wine? She even took it upon herself to decorate for the funeral. Fifty musicians, I'll reduce the gold inlay on my tomb. While she was in the throes of preparing for her funeral, Queen Catherine's favorite son, Francis, was a depressed man with a broken heart, who spent his days in the bars and casinos of Paris. When he reappeared, he was met by a familiar face. Lola, Mary's lady-in-waiting, had come to the Parisian casino alone to save her brother from a gambling debt. When her creditors wanted her to pay their debts with her body, Francis offered to quadruple his bet to pay her back. He saved Lola from the casino owner through a lucky gamble. He couldn't help but ask her about Mary, who had hurt him, even though he'd always said he wanted to forget about her. Hearing that Mary and Sebastian were in love, Francis' sadness overflowed. His whole body was wrapped in depression. The once vibrant prince of France was now a homeless man, wandering around without a place to call home. Lola's heart went out to this man. Don't be ashamed of your pain. It does you credit. You have a true heart. It will mend. This lonely, wounded man was healed by her words. Or perhaps he was so lonely that he couldn't resist the warmth of the moment. So when Lola, who was Mary's lady in waiting and also a good friend, embraced and had sex in a cheap hotel in Paris. On the other hand, Mary, who was far away from the palace in France, wanted to get married and settle down. I'm willing to take that risk. Ash. Marry me. Sebastian, who had always been insecure, gained confidence with Mary's encouragement. He also has the courage to get down on one knee and propose to the woman he loves. While the two of them were preparing for their wedding, Francis woke up in a beautiful warm dream and prepared to send Lola on a carriage ride back to the palace. His farewell conversation with Lola in an embrace was overheard by the owner of the casino. After learning that Lola was working at the palace, he pulled out a coin from his pocket. The queen is led out to the executioner's block. Throw that at her for me. Bring that coin back with her blood on it, and I'll give you a fortune in house credit. When he heard the terrible news, Francis couldn't take any more of her advice and rushed back to the palace to save his mother. Arriving before him at the French court was Mary's mother, the regent of Scotland. The mother and daughter hadn't seen each other for ten years, but there was no warmth when they saw each other again. Mary's mother has come all this way to prevent Mary and Sebastian from marrying on the grounds. That the Queen of Scotland cannot marry a bastard, Mary argues that she's doing it to save Francis' life after her mother's strong objections. From a fate a magician predicted. Please. Don't make light of Nostradamus' warning, all my- No matter how much Mary tried to put in a good word for Sebastian, her mother only recognized Francis as her son-in-law. This put Mary's marriage at an impasse. Seeing that she couldn't convince her mother, Queen Mary plotted to run away with Sebastian. Queen Catherine's trusted seer also brought her his latest prediction. The gory scenes of Francis' death in his dreams have been superseded by other images. Not only are Francis and Mary happily married, but they have a son. Queen Catherine was furious when she heard his prediction. The blood that has been spilled, my blood yet, was because of what you foresaw. I am convicted of adultery, of treason! Mary is with Sebastian. In the midst of her hysteria, Francis rushed back to the palace. Coincidentally, he ran into Mary, who was about to elope with her brother. The two former lovers were at a loss as to what to say to each other when they met again. After a long silence, Francis spoke first. I'm back to plead with my father for her life. I'll be gone from court once I have my answer and the matter is settled. Then he gave her a detached nod and left without looking back. Mary's heart rippled again. She was still in love with this man. When Queen Catherine saw her son Francis, she didn't say hello before asking him for questions. Do you want Mary? Do you want to save me? Do you want the throne of France? Do you want your brothers to be safe? When her son answered in the affirmative, she kept urging him to get Mary back. Mary's mother also came forward to make her point. With the support of both mothers, Francis ran off to sabotage Mary's elopement with Sebastian. Your fate is your own when it comes to who you will marry. Him 
or me? After hearing Francis' question, Mary was caught in a dilemma and couldn't decide between the two men. So the elopement was ended, when she had no choice but to return to the French palace. She received a letter from the Pope on empty paper. This meant that the choice was back in Mary's hands. A blank piece of paper showed her the truth and that she couldn't have it both ways. Choose a place to settle down and get someone to live together. Mary and Francis are now on the verge of marrying each other.